Thank you, uh, Jisk, and um, well, good morning still, everyone. Um, so I'm uh, uh, Dan de Jong. I'm lead product manager at uh, SURF for our compute uh, services. Uh, we have a bunch of services for researchers of which compute uh, is a part. And uh, what I'll do uh, over the next 15 minutes is uh, uh, give you a bit of, of an introduction who we are a SURF and what sort of um, uh, services and facilities we have available for researchers and how to get access to those. Um, now, obviously, uh, 15 minutes is a relatively short time, uh, but the presentation that we have contains links and uh, will be made available after this talk. And so you can use those links to uh, uh, collect or find more information on our website. Or also feel free to, uh, to reach out, obviously, afterwards. Um, for starters, a little bit uh, about SURF. Um, we are a, a member cooperative, uh, which means that uh, uh, we are uh, owned uh, and, and steered by our members, uh, and we work basically on IT innovation in education and research. Um, and uh, some of our members uh, are obviously the, the large uh, universities and higher education institutes, but we also have uh, quite a few uh, vocational education institutes, uh, independent research institutes and uh, medical centers as, uh, as members. And essentially what we try to do is we try to act a little bit as a, as a, a shared service center, so things that uh, uh, these organizations collectively could do better or cheaper or uh, more efficiently, uh, we as SURF uh, try, to, uh, try to pick up. Um, now, for researchers, uh, we do uh, many different things. Um, and to be honest, even for me, sometimes it can be a little bit uh, uh, complex to figure out what it is that we exactly do. Uh, we do a lot. But if you break it down, there's essentially uh, uh, three uh, themes or three categories where we try to help researchers with. Uh, for starters, we provide services. Uh, so we provide services around research data management, around large-scale computing, around storage, but also, for example, around networks and infrastructure. Um, which we'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, we do a lot of work together with our members around innovation. So emerging technologies, uh, uh, emerging methods or approaches, we try to together with our members explore, or if our members want to explore, we try to facilitate that or help them with that. So for example, we're doing quite a bit now with uh, quantum and obviously with uh, AI and machine learning, uh, we do quite a bit. And then uh, we also act as a community. Uh, and so we organize activities for our members, together with our members. Um, we do uh, training, we do a bit of education, we organize interest groups. Uh, but for example, we also do uh, collective procurements. So we buy capacity uh, with uh, cloud providers or we buy uh, content with uh, major publishers. Uh, basically anything that makes sense to, uh, to, uh, to do collectively if you can get better terms. So uh, SURF is and does many things to help our researchers. Um, for the purpose of this call today, I'll go a little bit more deeper into what it is that we actually do for individual researchers or research groups that have an IT need. Um, and more specifically, that have a computation need or that have a data need. Um, this is a very uh, busy slide, but I'll try to uh, break it down a little bit. When it comes to compute, there's essentially three flavors that we have. Um, for starters, we've got facilities uh, for high performance computing and Snellius, the, the national supercomputer that is uh, housed here in uh, Science Park in Amsterdam is an example of that. Uh, we basically provide uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, capacity for those researchers that need to do uh, very complex simulations or calculations that would re require a lot of parallel uh, capacity. Um, we also, on top of Snellius, have a couple of, uh, you could say, uh, subservices or additional capabilities tailored to specific use cases. For example, when you need to do confidential computing or when you need to uh, teach students how to use uh, HPC facilities, uh, we provide those as well. Then uh, we have a, uh, a number of services that are focused on data processing or high throughput computing. So uh, the, the key difference being is if, you, if you're not just um, uh, need computing power to, to do a large calculation, but you basically need to process large amounts of data over a longer period of time. So for example, if you've got an instrument that's going to produce data for five or 10 years, and you just need a, a, a workflow um, to, to handle that data, mm -hmm. then our data processing uh, uh, facilities uh, might come in handy. We've got Spider, we've got a grid, uh, which we contribute to. Um, and also we have cloud computing. And cloud computing is basically when you're, um, you want uh, well, relatively ease of use, but you're also looking for flexibility. 
Um, so you might want to start relatively small. Uh, uh, you need a small capacity, but you want to scale up later. Uh, then uh, uh, the services that we provide around cloud computing could be, a, could be a good option. We've got our own portal called Research Cloud. That's a sort of a, a user-friendly UI that you can use to spin out uh, or spin up uh, virtual research environments um, where you can work in. Uh, but we also uh, make uh, a through Research Cloud access available to the public cloud. So if you want to work on AWS or Azure or Google, uh, that's also uh, possible. Um, so that's a very high level overview of our uh, compute services. And what's good to uh, uh, keep in mind is that we have quite a large team of advisors um, that can also provide guidance and help and support when using these services. So we've got uh, 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 advisors uh, specialized in HPC, obviously, but also a group that specialized in AI and ML, a group that specialized in cloud uh, setups, a group that spe uh, specialized in visualization. Um, so on top of these services, we also provide a bit of uh, consultancy. Now, we also have quite a few data services. So these are primarily focused on helping researchers organize, store, preserve, and share data. I'm not going to touch on all of them, but just a couple of examples. We've got Research Drive which is a, a platform where you can easily uh, store data and then share it uh, with a broader community. And it might be a group of researchers within your institution or across re institutions. We've got a thing like Data Archive, which is, uh, uh, yeah, basically if you need to store large amounts of data for a very long period of time, so 10, 15, 20 years, um, you don't want to store it on the other services because that's relatively uneconomical and, and expensive, but Data, data Archive is, is a, a relatively economical place to do that. And then we've got uh, services around research data management. So if you have a large complex data architecture, multiple people working with data sets in that architecture, and you need something to, to, to manage it, uh, to manage the governance, we, we offer some uh, options there as well. And again, here also uh, quite a few advisors that serve uh, that provide consultancy around that. Um, simplified summary, where to go? Um, I, I get asked this question often after presenting the previous slides. So, uh, <laughs> Um, so basically, if you want ease of use and you want plug and play compute, relatively flexible, go to Research Cloud and, and start your journey there. If you want very powerful parallel computing, go to Snellius, the national supercomputer. If you want to structurally process very large amounts of data over a longer period of time, then Spider might be a good starting point. If you want to store and share data, Research Drive is a good starting point. Data Archive, I already mentioned, for economical long-term storage. And finally, um, uh, if, for example, you want to work on public clouds and you need a bit of help to get going, um, maybe with which microservices to use or uh, what applications to run or, or just to get set up, uh, then we also have a dedicated cloud consultancy team that, uh, that can help. Um, what's important to mention, but because of time I'm not going into that, is that obviously these, these services and infrastructure that we provide as serve don't live in a, a vacuum, um, but they're part of a, essentially a broader ecosystem. There's European systems um, with uh, computing capacity and data capacity, such as the Lumi, the Finnish supercomputer, and Jules Verne, which will be a new uh, French uh, uh, supercomputer. And uh, we participate in that on behalf of our members. So we also uh, get a little bit of capacity and we help researchers get onto these services. And equally so, many universities in the Netherlands and some research institutes also have their own systems. And we also try to actively uh, collaborate with them to make sure that uh, if you're a researcher and you want to scale up or scale up, scale down, that, uh, that that's possible as well. <laughs> and the same is true for, for clouds. So um, we do uh, uh, procurement um, uh, on behalf of our members. Uh, uh, with the large cloud providers and uh, uh, through that procurement, uh, uh, yeah, we also provide uh, uh, researchers with access. Now, in case you're wondering, that's great, but how can I um, uh, get access to these uh, research services? Uh, there's a couple of different, route, uh, different routes. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, there's one route um, which is uh, uh, essentially entails you or the institution that you work for uh, paying for the services, but that's a route that's only used in very specific uh, circumstances. Um, the majority of researchers and research groups that use our services do so uh, in a subsidized way through the uh, MBO or Rekentijd call, our computing time call. So uh, MWO, the uh, Dutch Research Council, basically has a separate call for researchers and research groups that are in need of computing uh, capacity and, and associated data services. And essentially, you can apply um, for uh, capacity on our services and uh, 
there's two routes of applying. There's a small route. If you want to run a relatively smaller project for, let's say, one year, uh, you can get access pretty quickly. So if you do the application today, and it's a relatively simple form, usually within two weeks, you get, uh, you get that capacity granted. If you need a little bit more, uh, there's a, a, a large um, application route. Um, then uh, uh, your application uh, gets reviewed by a, a scientific committee. Uh, and then usually after two months or so, two or three months, you, you get uh, uh, access if uh, your application is granted. Although usually we also give uh, access uh, already prior to that, sort of temporary access so that you can already start experimenting and setting up. Um, and there's also some uh, uh, temporary calls. Currently, there's a, a call for public cloud access where you can get some specialized capacity in the public cloud providers. Um, if you follow the links, you can um, find more information on uh, who can apply, how to apply, what you can apply for. Uh, but you see on the right, uh, I just limit, listed some of the limits. So you can get CPU core hours, GPU core hours, you can get storage, uh, you can uh, get support and, and some consultancy through this. Um, so it's quite a bit possible. And actually, yeah, there's there's uh, uh, there's hundreds of, uh, of uh, researchers and research projects that use this uh, around every year. Um, yeah, uh, not going to touch on this, but just for your uh, reference, I included uh, links to uh, more information of the, the various uh, compute services and data services that uh, we just touched on. Um, finally, um, just a, um, a heads up. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we as serve, we also organize events uh, for our community. So that's uh, basically, well, uh, a large group of people in edu Dutch education and, uh, and science. And as part of that, we also uh, organize training sessions and those are very often uh, free to attend. Um, there's an agenda on our website which uh, contains all the events that we organize, but I just, for this presentation, highlighted three that are now upcoming in the next couple of weeks. There's an introduction to uh, supercomputing, uh, which is a regular course that we give on a frequent basis, uh, part online and part uh, in person. Um, and that, that's something like, uh, well, each chapter is like half a day or something like that, but it basically gives you the basic skills to work on a, on a system like so uh, Snellius. There's also very niche uh, courses. So we're right now, a few days later, we've got a course for cluster computing for social scientists with R that's being organized at our offices here in Amsterdam. And sometimes we also do very uh, broad events. Um, in December uh, last year, we did a large scale computing event here in Amsterdam. Uh, for researchers uh, that that work with large scale computing uh, uh, facilities, uh, but for example, in March we have a cloud event uh, coming up uh, for researchers and research support uh, staff that uh, that uh, want to work or work with. Uh, um, yeah, that uh, that was it. Um, thank you very much. And again, if you uh, want to know more. Uh, feel free to uh, go to our website, use the links that are in the, uh, the presentation, or uh, uh, reach out and uh, drop me an email. Uh, thank you very much.